In this session we are going to perform a swept path analysis using the AutoDrive Arc tool. Now before we get in and try and do anything real specific, I'd like to start by just getting a feel for how a vehicle is driven using the software. I have a drawing open on screen, it's called 01 AutoDrive Arc. This drawing contains a lot of parking lot geometry and roadway geometry, so we have many places to explore vehicle turning. Let's start by painting the drawing over to the left. I'll give myself some free space here on the right where I can drive. I will then click the Vehicle Tracking tab to bring those tools up in the interface. I will then launch the AutoDrive Arc tool. It's here in the Swept Paths panel. Once I launch the command, it'll bring up the Vehicle Library Explorer, allowing me to select a vehicle to drive. I'm going to pull this down and open the U.S. Design Vehicles group. Then I'll open the Statewide Ashto group. Ashto 2011 U.S. Customary Group, and I will select this vehicle, SU-40, single unit truck. This represents a large panel or delivery truck. This is a rigid vehicle, it's not articulated, and we can see it's approximately 40 feet long. Now that I've chosen my vehicle, I'll click Proceed, and I'm given the opportunity to set this as my default vehicle the next time I want to do an analysis. In this case, I'd rather not do that, so I'll click No. I'm also given the opportunity to change my default settings. I'm going to leave these at the current value, so I'll click OK. And if I zoom in, you can see that I am holding this vehicle at the cursor. Let me click and place that in the drawing. I can then move my cursor to adjust the driving direction. I'll click to set that. And then the Position Vehicle dialog box comes up. This represents my second chance. If I don't like the positioning or the rotation or some of the other settings of my vehicle, I can change those now. As an example, if I click this icon, I can adjust its positioning. Let me click to pick a new location. If I don't like the direction, I can click this icon. And I can drag my cursor and assign a new driving direction. There are other options here that you can experiment with. Feel free to do that when you get a chance. Since I like everything at this point, I'm going to come down and click Proceed. And then as I pull my cursor away, you can see that I'm pulling this out into a sweeping arc. That's why it's called the Auto Drive Arc Tool. To drive the vehicle, I'll pull out and pick a pass-through point. I can then pull my cursor in either direction to change the direction of my turn. Let me click again, and I'll zoom in. Notice that as I move the vehicle, we can see this arrow. This represents the amount of, or the, uh, the percentage of steering wheel lock to the right or to the left. So I can see just how far the steering wheel is being turned. Let me click another position, and let's say I've made a mistake. I want to back up and remove the last position. If I pull back through my last location, you'll see a red square right there at the axle. When you see the red square, you can click to remove that position. Let me pull this back. I'll click to remove this one. Let me click another couple locations here, and when I'm finished with my swept path, I will right-click and press Escape to deselect. If I hover over this, you can see that the swept path is a unique object, much like a block. It's considered a vehicle tracking path. We can also see that it's sitting on a layer called ATR01. Each path that you create will be placed on its own unique layer, which makes things nice. If you want to take and hide one of these, you can very easily freeze the layer to hide the swept path. If I zoom in, we can see that there's a representation of the vehicle here at the start of the path and the end. There are also some envelopes. These envelopes represent uh, properties about the vehicle. This green envelope represents the path of the vehicle body. The red envelope represents the path of the vehicle chassis. I'm going to zoom out and let's say I'd like to pick up from where I left off. How can I do that? Well, if I select the vehicle path, I can come up and launch the drive tool again. And you can see I'm right back where I was. Let me click to pick a point. I'll click to pick another point. Now I'm going to pull back again. And if we pull back and click, I can remove that previous position. If I continue to pull back, I am now simulating this vehicle driving in reverse. Let me take and pull back forward. I am now driving in a forward direction. When I'm finished, I'll right click and press Escape. Let's zoom in. Notice that the color of your vehicle path will change depending on if the vehicle is driving forward or in reverse. Now, the default colors for reverse are quite dark and they don't show up very well on a dark background. That's okay, we'll look at how to configure all of these colors in a future session. Let's zoom out, I'd like to show you one more thing. I'm going to select the path again and I'll come back up and launch the drive tool. The speed that you are traveling will dictate how fast the vehicle turns. 
I'm going to pull to the right and you can see that I've got a hundred percent wheel lock and I'm making a fairly immediate turn here. Each vehicle in the library is assigned a turning speed that represents how long it would take a driver to physically turn the steering wheel from a full left lock to a full right lock. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to press escape and let's look at the turning speed for this vehicle. I'm going to bring back up the library and right here this is the vehicle that we selected SU40. If I look over here to the right we can see the lock to lock time is approximately five seconds. So if we were turning from a full left to a full right lock, it would take about five seconds to make that transition. As long as we're here, I'd like to mention one more thing. We selected this vehicle from the library. Note that if you select a vehicle and place it in the drawing, it is physically inserted into the drawing. We can see that right down here under the pool for this drawing. That's actually a good thing because if I was to create my own custom vehicle or edit one of the pre-existing vehicles, I could simply save my drawing and send it to somebody else who has the vehicle tracking software and they would have my vehicle in the file. Let's click close and go back to the drawing. I'll pick up where we left off. So the quickness of our turn is based on our driving speed. Just to simulate that I'm going to come over to the auto drive dialog box and I'll click the show settings button. Right here we can see our current design speed forward is 5 miles an hour. I'm going to change this to 20 and then I'll click on screen to accept that value. And you can see to make that right turn, it's a much longer distance. That's because I'm now traveling faster, so I'm traveling farther to cover that two and a half seconds from a straight wheel direction to a full right lock. Let me click to place a new insertion. Whenever you see this octagon, it represents the speed has changed at this point in the path. Now, I don't want to keep this location, so I'll pull back into the vehicle and click to remove it. This puts me back to the original design speed of 5 miles an hour. I'm going to right click to finish my path and then I'll press escape to deselect. I will then zoom out. I do not need this path so I'm going to select it and press delete. And now that we have an idea of how the tool works, let's try and use it in a practical example. I'm going to zoom out. Let's take the vehicle that we just used, the delivery truck, and we will simulate uh, driving north along this road, we'll pull into the left turn lane and then we will try and negotiate the left turn into the parking lot. So I'll start by clicking the auto drive tool. I will then select the SU40 vehicle. I can grab it right here from the drawing. A shortcut to you select this is just simply double click on it. I will then zoom in on my drawing and click to place the vehicle. I will then rotate it such that it's aligned with the lane and I'll click. I like the positioning so I'm not going to bother with the second chance buttons. I'll just click proceed. And since I'm dealing with a small screen size, I'm going to collapse the show settings. I will then drive down the street. I'll click to place a, a new pass through point. And as I turn into the left lane here, I don't want to turn too far. If I click like right here, you can see that I've got a 73% wheel lock. So when I come back, it's, it's going to be a, a large sweeping path coming back and I'm going to end up driving through the island. So let me back up and take that out. What you want to do when you're driving the vehicle is watch that arrow. You want to keep the turning to a minimum. The more shallow the turn, the more natural the vehicle will drive, the smoother the path will be. Since I'm driving a pretty large vehicle, I'm going to pull over to the right here and hug the right side of the lane. Maybe I'll click right about there and then I will start my turn. I'll click here, I'll click here, I'll click here, and then I'll pull this into the parking lot and I'll click one more time. When I'm finished, I'll right click and then I'll press escape to deselect. Now we can review the path. If we take a look at this, looks like the envelopes are good. It's a viable driving path. I'm not encroaching on the outside lane there. Now when I come in I am clipping off this stripe a little bit. Looks like I do have some room to turn. Fortunately I can edit the path by selecting it and then I can use these grips on the pass-through points to adjust the travel. As an example I'll click this pass-through point and I'll push it out slightly. Note that if you push it too far you'll get a red line. That shows you that the vehicle physically cannot make that maneuver. So there's no way you can edit this such that it's impossible for the vehicle to follow the path. Let me click this grip again and I'll pull it back. That's pretty good. I am now missing the stripe. I'm missing the curb and gutter. Let me grab this end of the path. We'll pull this out a touch so that we're straight. And I'll press escape. 
that looks pretty good. Now that we've seen a practical example for a swept path analysis, I'd like to give you a chance to try it yourself. If you would, visit the Home tab, and then here in the Layers panel, I'm going to open the Layer Control, and I'm going to turn on this layer called Dollar Sign Instructions. If I pan the drawing over, we'll see a couple targets and some instructions. Generally speaking, what I'd like you to do is insert a vehicle. The vehicle will be a WB-40 Intermediate Semi-Trailer, and I'd like you to drive it from point A to point B. So you'll navigate your way out of the parking lot, down this drive, and then you'll turn right onto the main road. Same as before, I'm going to attempt this maneuver myself. So I'll go back to the Vehicle Tracking tab, I'll click the Auto Drive Arc tool, and then in the library, within the same group here, I'm going to select the WB-40 Intermediate Semi-Trailer. Now this is an articulated vehicle, so we will see this bend when it turns. I'll click Proceed, and I do not want to make this the default, so I'll click No. Now, as just as a side note here, if you did click Yes and made this the default, the next time you launch the command, it's going to go right to that vehicle. You will not bring up the library. Not a problem. Let me drag this over. If that happens, all you have to do is bring the library up using the library toggle. Simply right-click on the default vehicle. It will appear bold in the list, and you can remove the default setting. So in the event you do that, you can always remove that property. Let me click No. I'll place the vehicle right here, and then I'll spin this around so it's aligned to the curb and gutter. I'll click Proceed, and then since I'm driving a large vehicle, I'm going to start heading over to the right here. I'll hug the curb, and when I get about halfway through the median, I'm going to start turning. Let me pull this through. Looks like that's not going to work for me, so I'll back up and take that position out. Let me turn a little bit earlier. There we go. I'm watching my arrow making sure that my arrow stays parallel to the street. That way I know that the wheels are pointing in that direction. Once I get the vehicle straight, I can pick a little farther apart. You don't want to pick too close together because when you go to edit the path later, that can make things more difficult. We'll talk more about path editing in a future session. Finally, since I'm going to be turning right, I'm going to hug the left side of the lane. I will then start my turn, and as I'm turning, I'm going to keep my eye on the front and the back of the vehicle to make sure that I'm not clipping the curb. I will then come back over to the right lane. We'll straighten this out, and I'll drive down to point B. When I'm finished, I'll right-click, and then I'll press Escape. And we can take a look at the path. This looks pretty good. Not too bad, we are able to transition that vehicle out of the parking lot and onto the main drive. In the big scheme of things, this path could support a couple of minor edits, but overall, based on the size of vehicle that we have and the amount of space we have in these lanes, it looks pretty good.